This is Robert Clotworthy, the narrator of The Curse of Oak Island, and I have a question for you. Could it be that you are listening to The Curse of Oak Island and Beyond live stream? This is a top pocket find, mate, for sure. All right, we are live. Hey, welcome everyone to The Curse of Oak Island and Beyond, a live stream. I am your host, Jeff Freeman, and tonight I am joined by Colin Jameson and Dale Carney. Thanks, guys. Hello. I'll turn you up a little bit. There we go. So, yeah, tonight I got to get back in the mood. You know, I got to get back into the mode of doing a show on, you know, every Wednesday night again. I'm going to do my best because we've got a uh, couple of great things coming up here, right? Because we've got the uh oak or what is it beyond oak island, if i can remember the name beyond oak island is uh starting up on uh october 4th that is in just what two weeks from now um so we've got uh beyond oak island starting up and we also have the curse of oak island officially made mention now that they are going to be starting on november 15th so that'll be tuesday november 15th for the very first season premiere of the curse of oak island so who's excited for that i am i know i am <laughs> all right you know it's it's been a long it, it's it's from from what april what well, was it almost actually in the first part of may is when i get, I think the last episode was the first part of may but from then all the way through till now you know we get very uh i get antsy and the closer we get to it starting and the more we see what's happening on the island the more excited i get about uh this and about the show coming back on and i'm really excited about beyond oak island this year truly i i'm i'm really looking forward to it now they've got a a marathon going on linda when was that marathon i think that uh let's say i gotta bring linda back up here i think the marathon is happening um they're gonna have an all day well I, I don't know what time's the start in the afternoon or whatever but they're gonna be going through all the old beyond oak islands from start to finish i think of all of them and that's gonna be i think that's next week i believe um, but anyway, so I'm looking forward to that because I love those. And, you know, we've had so many of those folks that were on oh, marathons next Tuesday. Thank you. We've had so many of those folks on Matt Howling. We've had uh, Christian Roper, of course, as you know, and uh, oh, my gosh, uh, Gypsy Jules, Donna McCauley. Uh, man, <laughs> I'm trying to think of all their names. But we've had all so many people and Jan has reached out and you know got those people to come on with us so we could update and recap the show with them here and that's been awesome and i really thank jan so very very much for that and she's going to be doing it again this year working on those folks so as they come out we will find out um uh who they all are going to be so um and then we'll try to get them on the show a couple of things I wanted to talk about. First of all, um, as we get rolling, we're going to make this a short show tonight, folks. I just wanted to kind of give a little bit of an update of what's going on on Oak Island. We're going to show some pictures that James, uh, James <laughs> that Colin took uh, of uh, Oak Island and some video that he took. And then we are also going to be um, talking about the fundraiser uh, that uh, Dale is doing for Christmas daddies again this year and the trials and tribulations that he has been through <laughs> with that. But wait till he goes through the items, folks. I know some of you may have seen or heard some of us before, but you really want to pay attention to the items that he is, uh, has this year. Awesome. Awesome stuff. I mean, bigger and better than last year, if you can believe that. So really looking forward to that. Um, I did want to give a little bit of an update as to some of the things that are going on um, coming up here on the show before we get started with all of that. Uh, of course, uh, tomorrow night I have Greg Lawson coming on, uh, JFree906. Uh, Greg is going to be coming on with me. I met Greg at Phenomicon when I was out in Utah, and Greg was fantastic. He, um, oh, okay, yeah. I'll mention that too. Linda's reminding me of something else I got to talk about. Um, Greg Lawson was a fantastic guy to talk to. I mean, he and I were, we always seemed to be around, you know, whatever event we were going to, if he wasn't speaking, then somebody else was, and he was there. I mean, we just hung out a lot. Um, and I ended up getting a couple of his books and he's coming on the show with me tomorrow night. Uh, one of the books he's got is this one here. It's how to be a paranormal detective. Now I realize this is more for the, beyond oak island world um but this is a really i haven't read this one yet i am working on this one and this is what we're going to be talking about tomorrow night 
and that is Roswell. Now, Greg is not necessarily a ufologist or anything like that. He is a professional investigator and author, of course. This man knows his stuff, and he knows how to conduct an investigation. And so he has taken Roswell, and he has dissected it into a book and his own professional investigation style. So we're going to be talking about that tomorrow night. And Roswell, interesting. I heard his talk on this. You guys are going to want to, anybody that's interested in that whole thing and Roswell and all that, you're going to want to tune in tomorrow night for Greg Lawson. Really looking forward to that show. Um, and then uh, I'm going to be in Des Moines next <clears throat> week, all week. And then Linda also mentioned that uh, Saturday, and I don't, you know, I guess kind of shake my head a little bit, but of course, uh, uh, Saturday from 10 to 2, I am in Sterling, Kansas right now. And Linda's house is literally like a half a block away. But we're going to be doing a, uh, a meet and greet. If anybody is in the area that would like to come down to Sterling, Kansas and meet Linda and I, you can do so um, at, uh, from 10 uh, to 2. Um, and so we will be able to uh, meet you guys. I love meeting all the folks out at Phenomicon. It was awesome. Uh, right off the bat, I met somebody in the parking lot. When I first got there, somebody came up and said, hey, Jeff Friedman. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So, I mean, it was it was really cool. I love meeting all of you folks if I get the opportunity. So if you're in the area and you can come to that Saturday from 10 until 2 p.m. at Linda's house. Is there wine and cheese? What's that? Is there wine and cheese? Uh, yes, there will probably be. I did see, That's why I told Linda. I said, beware of Romulans bearing gifts, if you know where that's from. Uh, so, and I brought her a couple bottles of wine. Uh, one was from Mari Vineyards and another, and then another one was from another local vineyard in, uh, Michigan, Northern Michigan. Um, so when I was at Mari Vineyards, that was awesome. I really enjoyed that. That was uh, a good, uh, I liked your pictures. Yeah. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. I had a great time over there. Great. And I'm going to be, I got invited back. I did take that video down by the way. And the reason I did that was because the lady that did my, my, uh, Sue who did my tour, even though I mentioned to her that I was taking video and that I mentioned to her that it would be on YouTube and I had no idea how many people might watch it. Uh, she was okay with it. But then when she saw it afterwards, she felt a little, uh, you know, a little, you know, so I said, okay, boom, I took it down. They have invited me to come back and they've asked me to uh, come back whenever I want in the fall or the spring and redo the entire video again with another tour guide. And they're They just said, come back. We'll arrange it. We'll get you all set up for a private tour. I can't wait. So I'm going to do that. Awesome. And I'm going to do a much better job and leave out the acting. That <laughs> leave out the acting and all that and just do a, uh, just be myself and do the show. So that's what, I, that's going to be coming up sometime in the future. We'll get that done. Um, also, oh, we got Beyond Oak Island starts on the 4th. The 5th is Jim McQuiston is coming on with his new book. He's going to talk about that with us. Jim McQuiston's on the 5th at 7.30. Then I got Carl the Crusher coming on Thursday at 7.30. If you haven't Carl seen the Carl the Crusher, Crusher, if you're a Beyond Oak Island fan, I mean, Beyond Our World fan, paranormal, UFO type stuff, check out Carl the Crusher on YouTube channel. Just Carl the Crusher, and you will find his channel there. Great guy. He's coming on. Um, Karen Public Cover got rescheduled. She's coming on the 12th. We have our first update. We'll do our first recap of the first Beyond Oak Island, which I believe is the shipwreck of the um <laughs> atocha atocha i hope i said that right the atocha uh the shipwreck of the atocha it was one i believe that they didn't get to before that they now have put together and it's going to be the first episode and uh, tom burns and i will be updating our uh, recapping that on the 13th and then we're going to follow that on the thursdays after that so we got those coming up uh and then of course the curse of oak island starting on the 15th of november so all right so got that stuff gone okay so um the hurricane oh my gosh you guys both live right there in nova scotia and now my data that i have is a little bit old but the hurricane is right now tracking the projected track is right into your neighborhood i mean how what are you guys doing to prepare i mean what's are you doing anything to prepare yet? Yeah. <clears throat> I spent the night. I'm going early to bed. I was so pulling the boats. All the boats are out of the water. It was a steady stream of uh, trailers and stuff going today. Everyone's getting prepped. So I suspect us and the island is going to get hit pretty hard uh, Friday night going into Saturday. We're, 
we're not going to get missed. It's it's coming. It's it's going to happen. Yeah, unfortunately. We, uh, yeah. we took a foot and a half of water out of the pool because there's about 140 millimeters of rain coming. And uh, wind. We had to move everything into the uh, the gazebo because the wind is going to be incredible. Yeah. But it looks it's, like it's going to make landfall over Cape Breton, which is the projected path I've seen. Looks like it's going to bring it over Lewisburg, Sydney, New Waterford area. So it could cause some havoc down there. And this is apparently from what I was just reading, it's the strongest hurricane to ever hit Canada. Yeah. Really? It's going to be a, a level three uh, going to a two as it hits landfall. So it's going to yeah. be a substantial, it's going to be a big event here. I think someone else said about gas for the generator. Yeah, my garage is full of uh, gas jugs because we'll probably be without power for a few days. Yeah. So It's mm. quite a distance from Oak Island too. Yeah, yeah. But not directly at Oak Island, but no, lots, no, of no, wind, no. lots of rain and the storm surge. That's the kind of thing. And I know, Colin, you've got a place. You're right, you're right there. I mean, yeah, yeah definitely got to be concerned. Yeah. Now, I do have some of the latest. Now, these these are a little old. I I, I tried to reach out and grab uh, the early or the most recent, um, but it's um, that's pretty close about, still. Yeah, this is pretty close to the track. This is where it's currently, this is Fiona, and it, this is the current track, or, or was about eight hours ago anyway, and it changes. We all know that. I just looked at the updated one. It's pretty much the same. Okay, good. Thank the you. The reason why it's being pushed over is there's a cold front coming down that's pushing it a bit. Ah. If that cold front was coming down, it'd be direct hit straight through the province. Yeah, and maybe that's this right here, this cold front here that you're predicting yeah. that's going to yeah. push, push it Put out the, just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, at, uh, I'm I'm five minutes by boat from Oak Island, and our our wind folk forecast here is about seventy mile an hour winds we're going to have here. So it'll be and big big storm surge. So it'll be yeah. exciting on the coast. And ours here is projected between 100 and 100 and about 110. I think they said. Yeah. At this end. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this is showing that now again. This was, I believe, this one is saying that uh, Saturday at 6 a.m. Eastern time, we're looking at this right here. Now, it like like uh, Dale just said, it has moved a little bit, uh, but it looks like it's definitely going to be hitting. And and this is where the the eye is one bad place, of course. But you've yeah. got all this stuff happening over here. Yeah, that's where we're at. That's where I'm at. Yeah, exactly. Right where your, right where your mouth was. Everything so. Uh, our prayer thoughts and prayers are out for you guys, uh, obviously, because we don't want uh, anyone to be hurt by this. We, you know, if it does track this way, there will likely be damage and storm surge and all that kind of stuff. But our, we're going to be thinking about you guys and praying for you there too, as well. So, uh, and then we'll keep an eye on what's happening with Oak Island as this thing tracks along as well. So, um, you know, will that affect a lot of what's happening? I don't know. Um, you know, right now, Quite honestly, I don't believe, uh, based upon the pictures that Colin has taken uh, in the video, there hasn't been a lot of activity above ground. Now, if they get a ton of rain, how is this going to affect things? Um, I don't know. But you know that they have professionals on site. Dumas is there, and plus all of the guys that are part of the um, uh, the, the, the team there. They know lot, to lot, Lots of pumps. Yes. They will have lots of pumps and all kinds of stuff like that uh, going. You can uh, you can bet. So that's good, and that's going to help a lot. And then um, we'll just see what happens. But you know, again, they uh, above ground as far as we know, a lot of the work, most of the work has been either a uh, has been lot five, and then we know that they are tunneling underground. They a lot of the work has been going on underground. Now we know that guys too have been. Um, the guys have been uh, doing other stuff around it. We've seen them going around different parts of the country, different parts of the world. Um, so Rick know, was 10 minutes from my house here in Amherst uh, during the summer. Were they? Yeah. Rick and um, I can't remember who was with them. They're up here. Uh, anyway, 10 minutes from my house was a fort, uh, Fort Renew, Renaud or something mm -hmm. it's called. But anyway, they were there for Doug Crowell's with them. That's what it was. Okay. But they're 10 minutes from here in wow. Amherst. So they're all over the place. Yeah. And I tell you, they've got a lot to, uh, a lot to, you know, to do outside now what they got beyond Oak Island and uh, some of their other ventures that they have working right now. 
and you know knowing that how many guys can you fit inside the tunnel underground you can't put there's like five people that are doing this kind of work or whatever you can't fit everybody down there um now based upon and i'm going to get started with this right now based upon the some of the pictures that colin has provided us with from his boat right out there uh uh, looking at, uh, of course, right here, we're looking up from the money pit uh, area. We're looking up at the crane that's working. Now, we know the crane is sitting up on top of the woman or just back behind the women's memorial up on top of the hill there. Between the women's memorial and 10X is where it sits right there. They built a pad there, uh, strengthened that all up and put the pad there. And that's where the crane has been operating. And it can reach down into the women's memorial just fine from there. And Colin, I, I wanted to ask you a little bit too. Now you were there on site. It looks to us, you know, I can make a kind of an idea of what's going on, but I kind of wanted to get it right from you because you're there. So what do you think is going on right now uh, at the money pit? It, it looks like they're taking the material, whatever the tunneling operation they're doing, that they're using mm -hmm. this to actually pick because it's a, they must have a reinforced structure where they're entering into the tunnel going underground. Yep. So they're using this to dig bring the material up and then this crane is coming and it's going straight time. But I'll tell you, they're taking some pile of material out and it's going down quite far. I know in the video, you can kind of get a, a uh, you can see where the, even in this picture with the grab and then where mm -hmm. the, uh, I guess the kind of the controls further up the cable are, and you can see it when it goes underground, how far down it goes. It's, ah. it's a fair jag. Yeah. I don't know how deep that particular, now this is now what they've done and folks, if you haven't seen this already, and I'm sure most everybody has, um, cause I had the drone, uh, footage that we got, uh, from, um, uh, someone that, uh, donated that to us. And thank you again very much for that. Um, but we had the drone footage that we were able to show and you could see the reinforcement that they had done on the, uh, yeah. shaft. This was a searcher shaft. It was at the base of the woman's memorial. And it was always full of water and there was wood built up around there. Um, they have taken that and completely redone that entire entrance area. Um, they, they made a pad around there. They put railing around it. They put a lid on it. They got yeah. two sections to that lid. One is where the people go in and out of and the air. They've got ventilation uh, blowing fresh air down there. And then you got the section where the hammer grab is going in and out, like Colin was just saying. And you said it was going, looks like it's going down in there quite a ways. There is, uh, let's see, make sure I get my, okay. Now I'm going to show the other picture first real quick. There was also this one. Now this picture you took, this is over um, off of the swamp area, correct? Yeah. So when I was taking the video, it was, you know, I'm looking to my right and this, I'm kind of looking straight ahead at the swamp. So it's right in the similar area and you stand there and look around. But yeah, they've got some pretty heavy duty industrial uh pumps. That's a huge uh, pump right there. Yeah, yeah. And which is which is kind of new because uh, up until this week, that's the first time that I actually seen pumping equipment um at the swamp. Now, are they using that water for work that they're doing up on the other side at the um the wash plant? I don't know. Um I think, I don't know if I had, po I, I'm pretty sure I posted the picture on the Smith's Cove side when you can mm -hmm. see the wash plant. Um, I don't know if you can see them really well in the pictures, but they, they've got a bunch of uh, IBC uh, water totes. So they'd be like yep. uh, a thousand liter, whatever that would be, uh, 250 or 500 gallon, 250 gallon containers of yeah. water. 250, yep. um, which was newer as well. That had not been there. So they clearly had been um, running material through the wash plant um, and using that water and the totes and so forth. Right. So that's a massive good. pump. Mm, it that's, is a, that's a bigger pump than I've seen them ever use out there before. Yeah. Um, I, and again, you know, yeah, they've talked about that before. Remember last year they had to wrap things up so they could let the, the, um, it's very windy here today. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that rattling, uh, but they let it, they let it fill up at the end of last season because they needed the water for the wash plant. That's what they said. Now they're not going to, yeah. I don't know if they're like filling totes or whatever with it, but that's where they're drawing their water from is mm -hmm. um, Smith's Cove. And it, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, the swamp. And, and of course we assume that they're using that for uh, the wash plant. I'll try to find that picture yeah. also um, of the wash plant area. 
I'll go take a look for it. Now, I did want to show this video real quick, folks. This is really cool. Uh, it's the uh, hammer grab actually uh, in operation. And unfortunately, the the truck, he's dumping the, uh, well, I'll let, and I'll let Colin explain, but I'm going to mute this because it was very windy that day, or at least it picked up a lot of wind. Mute this real quick. There we go. Okay, so go ahead. Now you can you can even hear you can with the with the audio you kind of hear all the clinking and the uh, the cables and the and the hammer grab kind of banging and smashing while they're going down. But yep. yeah, here he is coming back up, and you can see the the uh, how far down they were. I mean, this was the cables were running quite a while there. Yeah, and then you got the controls, and there it is coming out there. Yeah, there it is coming out there. So that's quite a ways down. That's just the control piece. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it is. That's what I say. It's down there if they're jagged. Yeah. Okay, there's the hammer grab. And I noticed this little thing on the side of the hammer grab right there, too. It's like a guide. I don't know if that's a guide that holds it, you know, in the... So it's not, you know... It's certainly whatever mechanisms, because it'd be a couple of cables to open and close the... Uh, because it's not really a hammer grab, as per se. It's just right. kind of a, a just oh. scoop. Yeah, like a yeah. scoop or a claw. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's pretty interesting. So you see it, you see it come up out of there, uh, and then you know it's dumping the spoils into the back of a dump truck, and then we assume the dump truck is heading down towards Smith's Cove, yeah. so that they can then go through those spoils as they yeah. remove them, um, yeah. which is you know really uh, interesting. Um, and they've been working away at that. Um, the last two weekends I've been out and in, even on a holiday, like a Sunday, a Saturday evening, you know, they've been working at that straight time. No, I, they typically video, they're filming like kind of a Monday to Friday, nine to five type of right. routine generally. Um, but this has been going on even after hours. So there is clearly a lot of materials. I'm assuming they're running this throughout the day, taking stuff out. And then even on the weekends and, and uh, holidays, there's a couple of guys out there working at it. So it's pretty it's pretty cool it's pretty exciting it's a big undertaking whatever whatever it is i think we're going to be uh, it's going to be a big wow um, yeah. when the season starts up yeah i agree i think so too um now that was that was very interesting because of the uh you know we know that they're we know they're tunneling we know that dumas is out there dumas has been out there since june um yeah. so they had a lot of work to do to reinforce and re basically reconstruct the entire uh searcher shaft that was at the base of the woman's memorial they had to get all that done get the lid on it and start working underground um and so that took a while and now they're actually doing the tunneling and we again we're and there's a lot of assumptions that i'm making here folks i do speculate quite a bit as you well know um, but we are i am assuming that they found uh, a void with the um the muon technology yeah. Uh, and that's where they went and they poked a hole and they found, um, <laughs> a, what looks like you've seen, have you guys seen the latest, uh, the latest commercial? Here's the concrete wall in with the tumor. So they have, uh, let's see. Yeah. I'm, I'm most excited for the, um, the, certainly to see the results from the Muhan technology the Muhan scans. Yeah. I think it's going to be. That stuff is different. so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think that's going to answer the question of what's there or not. I kind of what excites me even more is the fact that, in my mind, they they did that scans over the winter time. Mm -hmm. Now they've invested a tremendous amount of money in doing this tunneling operation. So clearly, you know, we spent all this time putting boreholes in, trying to guess. Right. You now between that and then the scan, they clearly found something very clear that they didn't want to go dig a hole and grab it out. They right. want to put people down to dig and remove whatever they had seen or, or, or is. So it's, it's the season's going to be, I, I hope I don't want to say that it's, it's it, that it's the final, but I think this season is going to be the, the wow. Know, yeah. It's either yeah. going to be treasure or the history or whatever. There's going to be a story is going to get answered this year. I was trying to find your other, your other video or other pictures that you took of Smith's Cove side. But anyway, the, we know that the, uh, we know that the, uh, the wash plant is there and those tote, there was at least one tote down there. We know that choice drilling is parked at their rig down there. 
Now we had the one borehole that, and I, I'm at a complete loss and Linda is going to have to help me again. The borehole number uh, that they found that was quite a bit uh, of a distance away from um, the, uh, where they did the, the 10 foot caissons last year. Um, it was quite a ways away. Um, and I was kind of, you know, surprised by that. Um, but then we saw the, the commercial or the promo for the show, which I'm again, trying to find real quick and I'm going to play it. Um, and don't worry, Dale, we'll get to your stuff here in just a second. I promise. No, uh, no, this is fun. Yep, looking at the time here, but, uh, let's see here. Uh, on a, on a side note, too, I sent a couple more pictures through to Jeff, but there, you can see there's also a, uh, a sonic drill rig still on the island as well. Oh, okay. All right. I Let's just sent I sent you a picture of that. That's all right. Let's bring so they're, they're they're not only are they digging the tunnel, but they're also poking holes for whatever else that they're poking holes for. All right. Let's see. Oh yeah, this is a good picture here. Let's see. I'm bring this up. So just remember when you're watching the season this year and the clock's up, you're like, you know what? I've seen this before. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Right there. That's that one there. And that is, uh, yeah, that's the uh, uh, choice drilling. And you can see the back end of Gerhardt's uh, water truck right there too. Yeah. Billy Gerhardt's water truck yeah. um, sitting there. And then. It was blowing a gale of wind on this side of the island, so I was super shaky, and the, and it was not. They weren't very good pictures because you can kind of see in the trees the uh, the wash plant in that picture. Yeah, you can <clears> see the edge of it right here. Yeah, and then the next one's even shadier, yeah. but you can see in the bottom there's two there's totes. They're not rocks. They're actually water totes in there. Okay, but, yeah, that one's really bloody. The more the more I zoom in, but yeah, you can see the yeah. wash plant right here. Yep, and I was then just the trying to. I was just yeah. trying to hold on to the boat when it's taking this way. <laughs> it was wild. I can imagine. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So uh, yeah. So I was trying to find the uh, the promo, but um, you know, and we can we can get that and pull that up here in a few minutes and uh, and talk about some of that stuff. But you know, what I was very excited about now, and again, folks, you know so well that they like to take bits and pieces, not only of old episodes in the past. Oh, yeah. And they do that and they take a little <laughs> place like, oh, we got to show Marty this one. I think that was actually from like last season or something. Uh, that little words that was put in there by Rick. It was Rick saying that something about having to show Marty. Um, but, you know, what we saw was they put a camera down. How many times have we said put a camera down that darn hole? Every like, episode. When were, yeah. When they were doing AB 13. Uh, last year, I said, you know, and they and the water was shooting up out of there. I'm like, get a camera down that. They probably do in most of the cases. They do that. Uh, we just don't see it. They don't show it on the TV show because they they've told us that a lot of things happen that aren't you know necessarily put on uh, make it to air. And there's um, probably so nothing interesting. Exactly, exactly. But this time there was and i cannot find it for the life of me i can't find the promo it was i just watched it a little while ago and now i can't find it at all i know it got posted you're bringing uh, us up jeff and you're just leaving us hanging here you're i know me. i know I, i'll keep looking at it when uh, when dale was talking about uh, um yeah vanessa thank you linda vanessa said they put a cam down every hole mm -hmm. so there you go we just don't see it because it was you know it wasn't all that exciting or whatever so um so anyway so we know that they do so okay so we got a lot happening out there we know that they're working that woman's memorial we know they're tunneling under there and we know that they're probably heading for and i'll find that but you saw the wood structure they went down there you saw the edge of the the can the hole that they or the bore hole that they drilled you saw the edge of that and you see the edge of the opening into this cavity area mm -hmm. and then they show the structure the wood down there. Now we know there's a lot of wood down there, right? But this is wood. It's and obviously underwater. It's full of water down there, but this is wood that is actually in the void area, not wood that was grabbed on the way to a void area. This is the wood in the void area underwater. So what does that mean? I don't know. We can speculate. Is that some sort? Was that the vault? Was that chapel vault? Is that the edge of it or something? Or is it, you know, the, we don't know yet, but uh, man, I'll tell you what, 
I'm I'm really excited about what's uh what's coming of that for sure. Um let's see. Dale, I'll go ahead and let you uh let you talk about the fundraiser a little bit. I'm gonna search for that other uh, I'm gonna be looking over here, but I'll be listening and I'm gonna let you talk about that. Christmas daddies, folks, last year it was great. We did so well. You guys did so well. Let us know what's happening this year. And so the what trials have been true. <laughs> uh, it started out as a GoFundMe because we had some items from Vanessa. And then it had to switch because we got a huge influx of items from uh, Rick sent us a bunch of stuff. So we decided, okay, we'll build a website and sell tickets on it for five bucks each. You can pick what prize you want. Everything was going great. Then I got an email from the Nova Scotia government. And then a phone call from the Nova Scotia government telling me I can't do tickets unless I had a license. Okay. Apply for a license, got approved. Uh, the conditions on it, there was about nine conditions. And the two top ones were I can't do e-transfers, anything online with like GoFundMe or anything like that because of the doing tickets. And the no, it wasn't GoFundMe. It was a, something other form. Um, anyway, I couldn't, do t- I couldn't do physical tickets. They wanted... All sorts of stuff. And then they told me the other condition that got me was I couldn't do anything outside of Nova Scotia. So only people in Nova Scotia would have qualified. Hmm. So I said, okay. So I said, last year we did a GoFundMe. I said, can we do that again? And they told me they have no control over that. I said, perfect. So we switched back over to a GoFundMe. So it looks kind of shady, but it is all legitimate. It's all going back to the kids. We're at about 3,700 right now. So everybody that's gotten tickets and all that, they're all being put into one big draw. Uh, There's... There's about 14 prizes this year because last year we had just the one baseball hat that was signed by the cast and we got about 14 things this year and a lot of it was donated by rick himself and uh i can show you what we got yeah please yeah you want. i i'm so, excited because i i have and i have to admit folks i have not bought any tickets yet but i am <laughs> going to i am going to get my tickets so the web <laughs> the website is the website is christmas for the kids.ca you go on the website, you can see all the pictures, and then you can go to the GoFundMe, and it's every $5 is one chance to win. So we put your name into the into the bin, however many tickets you get, and then we do one big draw. So I'll start with the smaller prizes. So the first one is, it's going to be, Vanessa sent in some t-shirts. Yep. Slamming cans. Well. Yeah. And sink and shafts. Sink and and shaft. she also, right. we're going to include the stickers with this. So we're going to make it, it's two t-shirts and then all of her, her rock stickers. That's awesome. So that's going to be two. It's going to be so two T-shirts and then that. The next thing Vanessa sent me was a signed picture. I don't know if you can nice. see it very well, but it's a signed picture by uh, I don't know what. Yeah, it was uh, Dave doing the hole for his father. Yep. Anyway, she sends us a signed picture with it. So that was the next thing that she sent us. Then she sent us the hard hat. The hard hat. That is and so cool. Signed by Dan Blankenship. It's signed by a bunch of guys on the island. Jack and uh, Gary and Rick and Marty have signed it. And uh, Dave Blankenship signed it. Charles Barkhouse. Vanessa signed it. So that's another item that's up. And that's got cool. Dan's signature on it. That, yeah. that makes that so much more. Yeah. Man, yeah. Man. And it's just on there. So we're, we're very careful because it will smudge. So we don't want to smudge yep. anything. So that's what, uh, that's what she sent up. Then the next thing to come in. Uh, we got some stuff from Rick. So the first thing we got was a deck of playing cards. I don't think you see very well, but it's got Gary as a joker, and Gary signed them. So it's just a thing, it's his actual signature on there. And on yep. the other side is Oak Island. Yep. Apparently, these are only given to friends of Rick's. So there's not wow. many of these out there for the general public. Wow. So that was one thing that he gave us. And then Rick sent up a picture, which is another one. So it's the old cast picture. Yep. And uh, he signed that. So that was another thing that he sent up. And then it started getting interesting. <laughs> <So then they, laughs> yeah. This is where it, it, if the hat with Dan Blankenship's uh, name, a signature on it isn't enough for you, the hard yeah. hat. Yeah. So he sent, then Rick, Rick sent up a bunch of stuff. So the first interesting thing was I got core samples from the money pit. And so what the neat thing about this is Rick has signed every one of them. That's very cool. So that was his hope you find the treasure in your life. Best wishes, Rick. So we're going to draw for these individually. So there's that one. There's 10X. And again, he signed the back of every one of these. Yep. There's a swamp. 
They call them coasters, but I don't know. I think these are really cool. Then there's the island. Mm -hmm. And then he signed the back of whoop, back of that one. Yep. Thanks so for there, believing. Yeah, there's four of those. So we're going to draw for these each individually again. And then the next thing that came in from Rick was a picture frame. That's so it's, nice. It's 9 by 13. Um, it's got Oak Island, Respect the Legend. And this is made from wood from the actual money pit. It's reclaimed wood. Uh, he's made a few of these. He signed the back of this one again. So he signed that one. It actually smells like seaweed. <laughs> it, it does. I noticed the smell on the other day. So there's that's going to be auctioned off. Or not auctioned. That's going to be drawn for. The cool thing that he sent me was... The cribbage board. The crib board. So awesome. this crib board, from what we were told, um, the person that engraved the crib board, Rick makes these out of the reclaimed wood from the money pit. Again, so this is from about 140 feet down, we were told. He assigned the back of it. Wow. Um, the girl that does the engraving on these, the person that, that does all his engraving on the desk, she told me, I asked her, I said, how many of these were made in total? She said 25. So apparently what I've been told is these were only given to theorists that go on the show. Yep. So that's that. this is pretty special. So, I mean, this is wood from the actual money pit. And, uh, yeah, there's only 25 of them made. And he includes the little crib pegs. And the, there's a little thing on the side here that opens up. Your crib, crib pegs are in there. So that's another thing we're going to be uh, drawn for. And then what else do I got? The baseball hat. Linda that has hat. donated... Linda has donated the hat back again. What? Yeah. Yeah. So oh, Linda Simpson, what she got that last year. Yeah. And she's donated it back for this year. She we kept got, it. Each this, year. this hat raised twenty four thousand four hundred and seven dollars last year. So the hat is back. It's on the. It's probably going to be the first or second top prize uh, because this is you can't get these. This is just as a rarity. But anyway, yeah. we have the hat. It's signed by the cast from last year, which is probably the same cast. Um, yeah. So every five dollars you donate to to our GoFundMe page is um, is 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 one entry. So, and then hundred percent of it after the the expenses that come out. Everybody's been asking me what the expenses are. The expenses are the the GoFundMe charges me a fee for doing this. Yep. And shipping because we're going to ship to all the winners. That's the only fees that come out of it. So everything else that's left goes to Christmas Daddies. There's a running total on the website, uh, christmasforthekids.ca. It shows you how much we raised before expenses. And once it's all done, I will total it all up and put the actual total that we're going to donate to Christmas Daddies mm -hmm. on December 3rd. And once it's donated, I'll get some pictures of us donating it and, and post the picture. Well, yeah. Dale, I'm going to save you some money because yeah. all the prizes I win, I'm just going to drive and I'll pick them up from your store. All right. I'll save you the ship. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I'm hoping we're hoping to get some more money coming in. It's been very slow the past couple of days. It's been barely anything because we haven't done very much with it. Uh, just trying to get everything ready and and stuff like that. So we're hoping to get a big boost going here with this podcast. And uh, yeah, yeah. but it's, it all goes back to kid tell kids in Nova Scotia yeah. at Christmas time. Um, last year, twenty four thousand helped two hundred and forty children have a full Christmas. So it's Christmas presents, Christmas um, presents, dinner, some toys, stuff like that. We got well, a chance they, to get that hat, yeah, and the hat, hat, and the cribbage I, board, and the I know. frame assigned well, so, by Rick. And those like if, any, I mean, if anybody's on. a super fan, I mean, this, this some of the stuff is is uh, rare. Like the like this is wood from the island. They went crazy over little ornaments that were made yeah. with splinters of wood in it. Mm -hmm. So I mean, this has I have actual, one. It's right yeah, there. <laughs> yeah, but this is a whole board. Oh so, my goodness! But I'm, I like them. I think it's really, really good. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of stuff, but the only reason we're doing it as a website is because there is so much stuff. So you can actually view the items on the website with the signatures, and then there's the GoFundMe is on there. Will you guys post the link onto maybe the group yes. chat or whatever? Yes. yes. Yeah, awesome. I did put it in this. I did put it in the chat a moment ago, and I will put it in the description of the show. It'll be down in the description below. Awesome. I'll get it in there for everybody so you can uh, click on it there. It'll take you right there. Christmasforthekids.ca. Yep. Okay. Yep. And I'll get that in there. Like I said, I did post it. Uh, it looks like uh, Indy Zandig says, uh, I'll drive up to Colin and I can carpool. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> you guys can go and collect your winnings. Uh, <laughs> right so, now, right now we're at about 37.45 and we're, we're hoping to be a little higher than that right now, but it's again, it's, it's just been quiet, but 
yeah, yeah thirty-seven forty-five. We're hoping to get. I don't know what we want to get. We were at twenty. We did twenty-four thousand last year. I'd love to get to thirty thousand and do three hundred kids in total. Um, it's all once we donate. It's going to be donated to Christmas Daddies, and if they let us in the building this year because of COVID, um, I'll travel from here to Halifax to do it personally on our, on air. That's nice. awesome. Yeah. yeah. So because no, really we don't hide anything, we just everything we get is is, is fully public. If anybody wants to know. Yep. So, now, did you so, um, last year you um, uh, the the Christmas Daddies the telethon or the yeah yep. the telethon that they had was on December fourth. Do you know what year or what December third? December third this year. Okay. It's on, so uh, it, yeah, it'd be on CTV Atlantic or CTV two, um, eleven to six. Once it gets closer, they'll have a link, and I'll set up the link and and put it on there. So and, will you do uh, the draw March. on that day? No, I'm doing the draw. The tickets are going to be sold until well, the chances for GoFundMe are going to be done until the 15th of November, and on the 23rd of November we're going to do the draw here. Perfect. Right here. Yeah. Awesome. So we'll do the draw live so everybody can see that it's live and there's nothing going on and yep. all in one big tote like last year, and we'll just pick out prizes and and go from there. But it, it'll start with like the T-shirts and then it'll go up from there. And there's yep. oh, there's a glow in the dark, a really cool glow in the dark. Oak Island mug that was done by a friend of Rick's that contacted me and said, Hey, I want to donate something really cool. I so I was talking to them and I they said, We don't want to mention who we are or anything. I said, Okay, no problem. They said, But it's a glow in the dark Oak Island mug. So it's white, it's got Oak Island on the front with a skull and crossbones, and on the back it's got a uh, Knights Templar and it turns blue in the dark. That's wow, cool. Cool. it's really cool. <laughs> Picture it on the page. Nice. So, All right, so we do have that up there, and uh, Linda posted that. I will definitely be putting that in the uh, description, uh, so we have it in the description of the show. Uh, but again, last year, I know the telethon, everything, even the studio time and everything, the people that were all there, everything was donated, free everything. gratis. There was no charge. So the people worked overtime, and they didn't. I mean, yep. they worked their own time to come in and do the TV station, uh, everything. It's a big, it's a big event. It's a big event. It's a um, it's a huge event in the Maritimes, and yeah. and and thank you, Dale, you and your wife for. Oh, I mean, you guys are a big proponents. It's that's huge. That's really Darlene huge. brought up a point. I have a thing going on. I haven't had a chance to get anything because we've been busy with the store. Um, we've had we decided to do twenty five people to donate a hundred bucks. They're going to be put in to win some Maritime Tartan products, which is um, I believe my memory shot. One of them was a wool shawl worth a hundred and some dollars. And the other one was, I can't remember right this minute, but there is some, some stuff I will get to that. We will be posting about that. Yep. So there's, there's 19, there's 19, there, yeah, there's 19 spots left for the a uh, hundred dollar donation. Okay. And then we draw All for right. the free shawl. Those who oh, I'm, need I'm definitely shawl. getting my name in for that. I'm putting my hundred dollar thing in tonight. So. <laughs> okay. And we have somebody that's going to match every so often. So watch for that one because the last year they matched up to, I think it was $7,000 in total. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So they said if they, they want to do it again and uh, they want to get it going and, and stuff. So yeah, all the anonymous uh, folks that do the things like that are fantastic. They uh, they truly it's are. amazing. And you, they were extremely grateful last year when they they asked the final total. They were blown away by how much was raised. And yeah. I mean, we're just small little people, and it, it all helps. It really does. Yeah, it does. It's and awesome. it's a great cause. It really truly yeah. is. And that's why get, we like to help. Yep. And I got to thank the guys from Ogon, like especially Rick for donating this stuff and taking the time to sign it. And there's pictures on the page of him signing the items and uh, stuff like that. But it was really nice for him to donate so much this year. I, I guess he was told how much we raised last year and he was blown away by it and wants to know every two weeks how much is raised and what we're at and, and all that. So, so we got to do this for Rick. Yep. Yeah. This was last year when they were signing yep. the hats. Uh, the different hats. Uh, the one hat yep. was uh, donated, and, and I mean, you auctioned one, and then there was the other one too. And um, but yeah, really cool. I mean, and they love to participate in this on the island, and so that makes it just a great cause. It, it really yeah. is. And, and they're uh, a great bunch for doing it. They, I mean, they're awesome for, for for doing all this. So, all right. So that's so, that's all my items, I believe. Yep, Linda came through as always, and she was over there hollering at me, and uh, and and also Jan. Jan would put, I say hollering, she wasn't hollering. I always say that, but it's just a tease. As my big sister over there yelling at me. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Linda and Jan. Jan put up that it was M sixteen point two five. That's the borehole. Thank you, Jan. M sixteen point two five is the one they put the camera down, and I do have a clip, and I am going to show it. And as soon as I hold on, here. yes, hold Jan, on. you do. What? Oh, uh, just Jan's scores. I asked if you had a hundred dollars, you get it. 
into the draw and the chances for the chart. And yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, here we go. All right, let me. Uh, I'm trying to make this bigger, but it's not getting any bigger for me. Let's <laughs> see here. <coughs> Let's see. Uh, I have no comment, Dale. No comment. <laughs> 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 I knew where it was going. I was trying to ignore it, but anyway. All right, so let's see if I can get this to be. There we go. All right, now I got a full screen here. All right, so we're going to play this. This is the promo uh, of it going through, and I'm going to bring this up on the screen, and then I'm going to stop it when we get to a certain point here. So let me see if it's got sound. No, it doesn't. There's the sound. Hopefully it won't be too loud. Let's play it. You thought they'd seen it all. Okay, let's roll. But now, the Fellowship will uncover something they've never seen before. It would be the first time ever, 31 meters, that we take a picture of a structure underground. Stop, 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 stop. A new season of The Curse yeah. of Oak Island. Coming so, soon. what I want to do is I want to back this up because I want to show two things. One, that one right there. Now, that is entrance into the cavity, the void that is down below. Now, we assume, I'm speculating again, but I, we assume that this was a void that was found by the muon technology. And then they did a borehole to it. And they and put a camera down in it. 30, now, 32 meters? Yes, so, 32 meters. Wow. So what's that? That's about... Uh, 100, 100 feet. 100 feet, maybe a little more, maybe right around yeah. there, about 100 feet. 104. 104, okay. So mm. 104 feet down. 32, 31.97 meters. They open, they actually enter the void. Uh, mm. That's awesome in itself. And again, we assume they found this with the muon technology. And then the next picture that I want to show, or the next stopping point, if I can get it, is right there. At 32.06 meters, you've got wood down below. Now, yes, okay, we've seen wood down come out of there all kinds of times. As I said at the beginning of the show, you know, they pulled wood out of the money, but this is not wood that is grabbed as they're going down and pulling up pieces of it as they're hammer grabbing down through a 10 foot caisson. This is wood that is already in a open void down below. <laughs> now it looks broken up. It looks like it's been damaged. Is that because of the hammer grab? Is that because of what? We don't know. And we don't know for a fact that it is a structure, but why else would there be this wood down there? Okay. So it could mean a lot of different things, but as you heard them say, they found a structure or what looks to be a structure at 32.06 meters. You know, what's that? A hundred, that's a little more. That'd be about what? 110, 12 feet, somewhere around there. Yeah. Uh, 104, 100. Yeah. Somewhere around that area. Okay. This, this folks, this could be huge. This could be huge, and I can't wait to find out. Now, of course, this will be right toward the end of the season, right? This will probably be like March by the time we get to find out exactly what this is. But, uh, oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. Are you guys excited? I'm excited. I'm excited. Right? I'm very excited. <laughs> so, all right, folks, I'm going to wrap it up. We wanted to keep this one short. Uh, we ran in about 50 minutes, and uh, – but so there we go. We've got, and we're, we'll keep you updated as much as we can. Uh, oh, Linda did send me another. This is an update uh, from the um, the track. It looks like the track is about the same as uh, Dale said. It looks like it has moved a little bit. I'm going to bring this up real quick. It looks like this is uh, updated just uh, uh, issued 9 p.m. So this was, uh, yeah, 20 minutes ago. Uh, on the East Coast, and there you go. So there's it's right, it's right. It looks like it's going to hit right at the Cancel Causeway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so go down Halifax towards, being over here. Yeah, yeah Cancel so. Causeway. Uh, it's still going to bring it over Lewisburg to Waterford, Sydney area. It's going to be crazy. Right, right where that <laughs> W know. is. Right where the W is is you, is right around where Lewisburg is. Yeah, uh -huh. right here. Yeah, that area. Yeah. Okay, but really, so it's not necessarily the eye of the hurricane that's the it's issue. The outer. It's the outer and the, and the swell and the surge that come from it. So yes. all, pretty much the entire province is going to get yeah. Hailed. All up. As this thing is swirling its way in, it's grabbing that water and it's bringing it up here and it's just bringing it right up into the coast. 
Uh, yeah. And it's going to storm surge the heck out of that area, folks. And so Friday night, uh, we'll probably get our latest on Friday night. This is supposed to be about Saturday when they figure it's hitting. Uh, let's see. Well, let's look Friday, Friday night yeah. into Saturday. Yeah, yeah, Friday night into Saturday. So Friday night, we're probably going to go live for a few minutes and just talk about what is the latest of it happening and let you guys know uh, as much as we can at that time. And uh, we'll be, you know, uh, you know. I'll go on with you, Jeff, if you want. Okay, cool. I, I, you're you're going to do guys, what, a, a hurricane update? Yeah, yeah a hurricane update. Oh, now, man. I expect yeah. you guys to put on your your uh, raincoat, your slicker, stand outside with your microphone. <laughs> Listen, don't don't joke. I'm telling you, Friday night, we'll, we'll be out on the dock. There may be a beer in hand, but we'll definitely get some, uh, we'll get the fucking <laughs> happening. Oh, Jeff, you're, you Jeff, gotta Jeff, do Jeff. your Jim Cantori. Do your Jim Cantori. <laughs> I got one thing. I, I just got one more quick thing. Um, okay. I had someone come in my store the other day because I had the, the crib board at the store. Yeah. Um, they offered me five thousand dollars for it. And where it's being no, done, right? I said no because it's being done as a fundraiser. I have to do it fair. Yeah. And I had I was talking to Linda about the other thing, the hat. I had an email the other day and I shared it with her. Um, someone wanted to buy the hat for five thousand. And again, I turned it down. So that was ten thousand dollars I turned down from just direct sales. I will not sell any of this. It's got to go in for the draw. So if you want to say buy for five thousand, you can put five thousand dollars worth of chances in. There you go. Because like, it's going to be five thousand dollars worth of chances. You're going to win something more than likely. It's going to be. You're going to get a thousand. You, you get a thousand chances, and I got to write them all out. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you do. Yes, I remember you wrote them all yep. out last They're time. They're all written out. So but I want to let people know that I don't sell them off. I will, if you want, you can make a big donation and you'll have a good chance at it. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, it's a great cause. And we really hope that you uh, far exceed last year's uh, take for this because it is a good cause. And everybody donates their time and you and your wife doing such a fantastic job. Uh, we were um, done. We were, we were 6,000. No, with the other hat that was on the show, they got 3,100. So we were. Nineteen hundred dollars away from matching what Walmart donated last year. Wow! They donated thirty thousand. We donated. If you added the two together, it was about twenty nine thousand, twenty twenty eight thousand something. Wow! We were, we were, it was the second highest ever donation they had from a private person. Yeah, there you go. There you go, folks. Yeah, Christy, you said it. Batten down the hatches, guys. We will do an update on Friday night. Let you guys know what's happening out there. Uh, and we'll we'll get Dale on, like I said, get him in his raincoat out there with a the microphone and doing his Jim Cantori, uh, hanging on to a pole or something to keep himself from blowing away. But uh, we will we'll, we'll give you an update as we go along. So again, thank you guys, appreciate it. We're getting back in the mode of talking about something uh, Oak Island related on Wednesdays. I probably won't have a show next week because I'll be in Des Moines working. <laughs> And then after that, we'll be back and doing it and getting ready to work our way right into Beyond Oak Island, premiering on uh, October 4th, and then the Curse of Oak Island premiering on November 15th. And lots of guests coming up between now and then. Thank you, Colin. Appreciate you being here tonight. And again, thank you so much for your pictures and video that you take. The boats are out of the water, so we can't get any more, at least nope, for now. They're going, they're going back in after the storm. Okay, all right. As soon as the storm is clear. Yeah, you'll have to go around and get a storm damage. There that'd you go. Be, that'd be cool. After the after the storm uh, effects of everything, and again, Dale, thank you so much, and thank your wife uh, Sherry for all the hard work that you guys do yes. for Christmas Daddies. I we will really appreciate it, and we hope you exceed those numbers, folks. Thank you for being here with us tonight, and uh, look for us uh, tomorrow night. If you you really should check this out, if you're if you're into UFO and paranormal stuff and all that, Roswell. If you want to hear a great investigation on the Roswell story. Be here tomorrow night for Greg Lawson. That's at 7.30 Eastern time. And we're going to be chopping it up with Greg. And he is a great guy. So we'll see you here tomorrow night, 7.30. Have a good night, guys. We'll see you next time right here on the Curse of Oak Island and be on the live stream. Bye-bye.